What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you my planted community fish turtle aquarium. This is something that I've kind of wanted for a long time, something that I can just sit down and enjoy. As a lot of you guys know, I have a lot of stock tanks, so like steel galvanized stock tanks that I keep my turtles in. And because of that, I, it, it prevents me from actually being able to enjoy what's in the tank. You know, like there's really no reason to put a lot of fancy unneeded decorations in there because you're not going to see them. So I set up one of my 75 gallon tanks in my room. So the volume might be kind of weird, like it might be echoey. But I set this tank up, got some fish in it. It's been running for about a month now for that cycle process. So it's got some algae. It, uh, the water level is down about an inch or half an inch. I guess I could have put some water in there, but uh, it's all good. You guys will be able to see it. But for being running for a month now, with the, the amount of turtles and fish in it, I'm impressed with how clean that it is. It's, it's pretty clear, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, so I'm just gonna turn the camera around and show you guys my community tank. All right, and here it is, the 75 gallon community turtle tank slash fish aquarium in its full glory. Here we have the alligator snapper tank. Um, that is getting completely revamped. Uh, it's going to be awesome when that is done because there's a lot of driftwood and we have some plants and everything in there. And since he is now big enough where I can have much deeper water, it's going to be much nicer. So alligator snapper tank, that's going to be a new video on the channel here pretty soon. He ate all the fish in there and I was like tired of spending like $120 on mollies and flatties every month. So he's just been eating pellets for the past few weeks. Um, but when I get that tank revamped, then it'll be looking pretty crispy. But uh, we're going to focus on this tank right now. This is a 75-gallon tank with a bunch of tropical fish and four turtles in there. Um, one turtle, I know for a fact, is not staying in this tank. And that would be this guy. This is my smaller Mississippi map turtle. It's, I believe, a female, but it is a little too small to tell. I'm, I'm pretty certain it's a female, though. Um, she's a rescue, which is why her shell is a little jacked up, but um, she's only about, oh gosh, three inches long. Yeah, I'd say about three, maybe three and a half inches long, but um, I put her in here uh, right when I set the tank up just because I thought it would look nice with a map turtle in it, you know, something to actually use the basket area, um, but it, she just doesn't go with the flow of the tank. Um, as you can see, we have a musk turtle, and I'll introduce to you guys everything in the tank. Um, but she is... Map turtles are very skittish and very frantic, and as you can see, she's trying to hide by putting sand on her shell. Um, and she's just a very skittish, frantic turtle. And the flow of the tank is pretty laid back. Like, it's got, I mean, when I'm sitting here in bed and just watching, the musk turtles are kind of just doing their thing. As you see, just hanging out. The fish are doing their thing, but then the map turtle is just swimming everywhere and swimming up against the glass. And um, so I'm gonna move her into the 300 gallon stock tank when that is set up. But um, for now, she's in here. But like I said before, not forever. Um, as you can see, begging for attention, we have Jerry, the common musk turtle. Um, she has been outside all summer long, um, except for the last three weeks. I brought her in just to put her in this tank. And like normal, or like usual, just like a switch, instantly goes back to being a captive turtle. Um, this turtle I've had for, like, I think three years now. I've had her for three years. Got her as a hatchling from a reptile show. And she is just doing astronomical. She's, she is such a great turtle. I highly recommend common musk turtles as a beginner turtle for anyone. This is my, my go-to beginner turtle, common musk. Um, as you can see, amazing personalities. Um, and then the back, you can see we have another musk turtle. This is a loggerhead musk turtle. Um, pretty cool. Actually, absolutely love this girl. Um, very unique turtle. I love loggerhead musk turtles. Their heads are super big. And I had snails in here, but as you can see, there's a shell right there. And then there's either three other shells in there somewhere, or she just straight up ate them. But she loves the snails. She does too, but this girl here, she loves the snails even more. Um, 
she doesn't have a name yet, but I'm, I'm thinking of a name. Um, it's going to be a good name because I absolutely love this turtle. Loggerhead musk turtles are great. And I'm really, really looking for a Razorback musk turtle around their size. They are about three inches too. Um, I'm really looking for a Razorback musk. If any of you guys know of where I can get a three inch Razorback musk turtle for this tank, that would be amazing. All right. Um, I would actually take out the other turtle. If I could get a Razorback musk, I would want to have the common musk. I'd want to have the Razorback and then the loggerhead because those are like the three, three main boys in the North American musk turtle group. But um, where is she at? She's somewhere. This is a cave. This isn't just a rock, as you can see. Exoterra. Um, my boy Jonah Battle, a a aka DIY Reptiles, gave me that cave along with some other pieces of driftwood, which absolutely I love. Um, but that is her hangout. That's the loggerhead musk turtle. That's where she hangs out all the time, which is great. I love that they use the cave. Um, I actually have the entrance, as you can kind of see right there. I have it facing this way, and you can't see inside of it. Um, a lot of people, when they put caves and hides in their tank, they make it so you can see inside of it, which I understand why. However, in my opinion, I kind of feel like that defeats the purpose of having a hide for your animals. Like, the whole point is so the animal can get away from stress, can get away from, you know, a lot of movement. If there's, like, people coming in and out of the room, they can get away from the fish or get away from other turtles. I feel like it's important to have a hide where they can truly get away from everything. So that's why usually when I put hides in my, my tanks or my enclosures, I make it in a way that even I can't see inside of it because the turtle needs their privacy. Now for the fourth turtle, um, this is, I was told, to be a Tabasco mud turtle. Now, she, it, him, I don't know, it's just pretty young, but I'm just going to say it's a she. She's only about two and a half inches long. She's, she's, like, got a lot of length on her, but she's not real wide. I mean, she's still pretty young. She's probably probably six or seven months old. Um, Tabasco mud turtle, very closely related to red cheek mud turtles. Um, she's just a unique turtle that I found at a reptile show. And I just really, I thought it was really cool to get her. Um, yeah, and she's been doing great in this tank. In fact, all these turtles, including the map turtle, they all for the most part, leave the fish alone. I've only had four fatalities out of all the fish in here. And over the course of a month, that's not bad. And those four fish were ones that were like, I was kind of on the fence about anyway. Two of them were like Kahuli or Kuli loaches, which are the real long worm-like loaches and they hide between the rocks. So I, you know, I kind of figured I was taking a chance. Turtles probably found them. And then two of them were tiger barbs, which I think might have died because of water quality. I have one tiger barb, barb left, but um, we'll see about them. For the most part, they all leave the fish alone. But this stinking Tabasco mud turtle, I swear, she just, there she is. She is going ham on these fish. She, she hasn't gotten any, but she's trying. But uh, speaking of fish, I'm gonna do my best to remember the names of every fish I got in this tank, as you can see. Um, but talk about the landscape a little bit. This tank is very heavy on driftwood. I love driftwood, but as you can see with the gator snapper tank, um, a lot of tannins released in that water, which makes it that tea color. It doesn't hurt anything at all. I personally just don't like it. The alligator snapper actually kind of benefits from the tannins, um, but in terms of a nice tank like this, I like it to be clear. So I put a, a bunch of uh, carbon in there. And it, uh, it keeps it clear. I also have this water clarifier and it works really well. Um, it is a, a tad bit green, but I kind of feel like it's because my wall there is green as well. So it is, it is, it's pretty dang clear. Um, but lots of, lots of driftwood as you can see. Um, lots of plants, got some java ferns in there. I've um, got some rocks and sand. This was a really cool piece that I actually found out of my woods. It was a root of a tree that had died and fallen over and it was sticking up out of the ground. So I, I cut it off with a handsaw, brought it up, skinned all the bark with it, power washed it, washed it, and then I poured boiling water all over it for like an hour. So it's all good. 
Um, as you can see, we have like some some algae growing on there. Um, the fish actually really like to eat that, so which is nice. Um, but as you can see, you've got a lot of driftwood, driftwood here, nice little structure I made there. Then we got some driftwood here, and then obviously we've got the rocks and the plants. And I just really like the look of this tank. I really do. Now, in terms of fish, here we have five. What is it called? Giant danios or danios or however you want to pronounce it. Um, five of those bad boys. And then as you can see right here, we've got both. Those are yogo loaches. Um, I'm a real big fan of the fish that clean the sand, as you can see. So we've got two yogo loaches. Um, here we have a rainbow shark. You see the, the black fish with the red fins. I, I, don't, I don't know about you guys. I'm a big fan of rainbow sharks. They're cheap. Pretty easy to keep they grow really fast and they're I don't know they're just really good I like to keep one per tank because they are pretty territorial but um rainbow sharks are very very cool to have um, we have two gold garamis which you can see one of them right here right there and keep in mind all these fish have been in this tank for a month so so they're they're very well you know adjusted in here everything is cycled through everything's all established so, um, everything in here has been in here and has been doing great. Um, as you can see, hanging out with the, the, the giant danios, we have, I think those are iridescent sharks, also known as iridescent catfish. Um, they should be getting pretty large, so at some point I'll probably have to throw them into the 300 gallon tank. Um, but until then, they're going to be hanging out in this 75 gallon um, and then if you guys, I'm sure you were, you were wondering, you got these bad boys right here. These are called dojo loaches and they're super long and eel-like, also known as pond loaches. Um, and they literally just hang out. Like, as you can see, he's resting on the, the suction cups for the filter. And then there's another one in there somewhere. And then uh, right here you can see we have some ghost shrimp. There should be four in there. I believe there's, I, I, I really think there's still four in there. I see them every once in a while. I know for a fact there's still two, but I believe all four ghost shrimp are still in there. Um, but let me try to find this other, oh, there he is. The dojo loach right there. They're super fun to watch during feeding time because they all just bombard the fish flakes and they're super frantic. But, um, yeah, and then we have a whiptail catfish in the back. It t kind of uh, does the job of a Picosimus, aka suckerfish. I really like the whiptails, they're super cool. Now, a lot of you guys might be wondering how I can keep these fish in with my turtles. And that's because two reasons. One, my turtles are well fed. You know, like with the alligator snapper, um, when I would go on vacation, or like when I would be gone for a few days, every fish in his tank would be gone by the time I got home. But while I was home and I was feeding him pellets every single day, those fish would last much longer. So these turtles don't actually go after the fish very often because it's, to them, it's a waste of their time. They know they're gonna get fed every day. They get fed every night before I go to bed. So um, that's kind of where they stand. Turtles are kind of lazy. They, they don't really wanna work for their food. So that doesn't mean that they don't go after them every once in a while. Like if they're just kind of hanging out like like Jerry here and a fish just happens to swim by, they might take a bite at it. But other than that, they don't really pursue these fish. Um, and there's the other gold garami right there. Um, we also have a pothos that is climbing out of this, this piece here that's sticking out of the water. I think that's super cool. Kind of give it a nice two-dimensional look. And then we've got the basking lamp. The basking area, log, branch, whatever. Got the loggerhead musk halfway out of his hide. That's a super cool shot. Whiptail catfish. And there's a pickerel catfish in there somewhere. I think it's a pickerel. But um he must be in the, the cave too. That's a that's a pretty nice sized cave. Um but what was I saying? What was I talking? Oh, how the turtles. Okay. So they're well fed one and two. The species of turtles that I have in here are musk turtles and mud turtles. They aren't big fish eaters. They're not super aggressive swimmers. 
they can handle deep water. Um, but in terms of their natural diet, they don't generally pursue fish as a key component of their diet, unlike softshell turtles or map turtles or sliders of, you know, really any turtle that you're going to see basking. In terms of basking turtles, most of them have, you know, a, a fish diet. Now, in terms of musk turtles, they're scavengers. They'll eat just about anything that sinks to the bottom of the pond, anything that's dead, alive, whatever they can get their mouth on, but they don't really pursue a lot of fish. And the fish I have in here are quick. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There are some turtles you just can't keep fish with. A lot of the times that's gonna be your sliders, your painteds, uh, your snappers, and for sure your soft shells. You, you won't have a lot of fish with your soft shells. Um, so if you wanna keep fish with your turtles, my high, like my biggest recommendation, I get this a lot, is because is I have a lot of fish in my pond I'm kind of going on a tangent here. Basically, I have found if you raise turtles with the fish and you raise turtles to associate you with food rather than their environment, you will have a lower fatality rate in terms of them getting fish. They're turtles, they have instincts. You're never going to truly eliminate that instinct. At some point, one of these turtles is going to catch one or two of these fish. It's just going to happen. It's the risk you gotta be willing to take when keeping fish and turtles, but there are things that you can do to reduce how many fish your turtle actually gets. Now, I don't know if any of you guys are still here in the video, it's about 15 minutes, and it's been a pretty single shot video. But you know what? This is a nice tank. I like my bed is right here. I just lay in here, look at the tank, enjoy my piece of nature that I brought into my room. I've um, got the Cascade 1000 right here, doing a good job right there, and uh, that dang Tabasco Mud Turtle needs an attitude adjustment. Oh, and there's a Tiger Barb, that's the last Tiger Barb right there. So if any of you guys are still here, I have a pretty cool thing that I'm thinking about, alright? At this point, in terms of what the video was actually supposed to be, like the title video, that's over, so if you're not interested in what I have to say, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. But if you're still here and want to hear my cool idea, um, feel free to stick around. So, there's a kind of fish that I have. You know what? Let me turn the camera around. All right, I'm kind of dark, but you can see the tanks, which is what you want to look at. There's a kind of fish that I've, I had when I was really young, when they were super cheap, that I've always really loved. And I think it's about time to be getting another one of them fish. They're called rope fish. Now I've said this like a lot of times previously. I'm not the kind of person to keep a fish tank. In my like, for, for being a turtle guy, I just can't keep a tank with just fish in it. I'm like, I gotta put a turtle in there. Like I feel like it's a waste of space to just have fish. For me personally, absolutely no hate or shade or anything thrown on the fish people. But I'm a turtle guy, and it would be rare for me to keep just a fish. But I feel like there's an exception, and that is this rope fish. I had one when I was little, and I found a place that carries them now, and I haven't seen them in stores for ages. And I'm like, I really want them. They're super easy to care for. So um, kind of what I'm thinking is, this tank here, this is a 36-gallon bow front tank. That's what my gator snapper is right now. Um, I have an empty 55 gallon downstairs. So I'm thinking, either move the gator snapper to the 55 gallon, or get a rope fish and put it in the 55 gallon downstairs. I could technically put a turtle with the rope fish, depending on the species of turtle. Like if it were a musk turtle of some sort, a smaller musk turtle. Um, but rope fish are notorious for jumping out of the tank and I would need to put a lid on the tank so I wouldn't be able to keep the proper lighting for the turtles. Um, I could put like a screen top on it, but as we all know, screen tops filter out a, basically all the UV in terms of the UV lights. So I wouldn't be the healthiest for the turtle. Um, so that's an idea I'm tossing around, getting a rope fish. They don't really do a whole lot, but 
they're just so dang cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm sure I'll figure it out. Got my 75 gallon, got the 36 gallon, then we got crested geckos all the way around. My room is like, this is like where all the nice tanks are and the downstairs is like 300 gallon stock tank, 180 gallon stock tank, tortoise table, you know. There's not a whole lot exciting down there. This is like the nice stuff. This is like the showroom. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry I have an itchy nose. I'm sure that's weird to watch. And I'm sure you didn't like really realize it until I pointed it out. So I just, like I brought it to your attention, which just made it weirder for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.